Hailing from the great cold state of Alaska, I am the Frozen Gamer. Welcome to Dads in Gaming, where I interview fellow dads who are not only gamers, but content creators. That content may or may not be gaming related, but every one of these gentlemen are passionate both about video games and being dads. Joining me today for the sixth Dads in Gaming is yet another very special guest. He's beginning to wonder if the fake mustache he wears for skits or if his face without it is the real disguise. He's been taking courses from Skillshare on and has nearly mastered how to type with boxing gloves. He is one of the founding members and creators of Blimey Cow, Mr. Josh Taylor. How are you doing today, Josh? Hey, Nathan. I'm doing well, man. How are you? I am doing pretty well. I'm still kind of waking up, but um, it's, it's good to finally get a chance to talk to you. So, You know, you said that you were... Uh three hours behind me and I was like that can't be right California is only two hours behind us and I didn't realize you were in Alaska so. yeah I mean I'm originally from California but I've been in Alaska okay. more than half of my life now so gotcha how did you end up in Alaska um I actually came here with my parents um in in October of 03 they came up here to serve as missionaries at a Bible college um, okay. in, in Glen Allen, Alaska. And I mean, it's not in Glen Allen anymore. It moved to Palmer, I think in 2012, I want to say. But um, I came up here with them and I was still in high school at the time. And then mm -hmm. um, after I graduated high school, I ended up going to the Bible college, which is where I met my wife and then stuck around Alaska. Nice. I am I moved out of Glen Allen about three years ago, so it's not a... Uh, not where I live anymore, but, um, yeah, so that's basically how I ended up here. <laughs> that's cool. Um, but anyway, going back to you. So, um, before we get into any of the main interview questions, I want to know what you're currently playing. Uh, I just finished up a second playthrough of the Talos Principle. Okay. Because that got released on Switch, which I was really excited mm -hmm. about, so I could just play it in bed at the end of the night, because it's a good game to just turn off your brain for like half an hour and try to solve some puzzles. So I guess you're not really turning off your brain, but... Using a different part of your brain. Using a different part of your brain, yeah. yeah. And then uh, I picked up Animal Crossing, mm -hmm. and I haven't done too much with that, but that is another end-of-the-night game. Yeah. And then uh, I really uh, had a hankering to uh, replay The Witness again. So oh, I just started okay. that a couple of days ago and um, I didn't I didn't last check how many panels I've sold already but it's got to be over 100. So I'm already like a sixth or so of the way through the game, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've, I mean, both the Talos Principle and The Witness are games I've been interested in. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, finding out the former came to Switch made me even more interested. And I've been w hoping that the latter would come to Switch, but yeah, I don't, I don't think they're gonna put the witness out on Switch. Unfortunately, like mm -hmm. anything that the guy who made it has said about it is that he's not the pro The problem with that guy is he's not very money driven. Yeah, which, I mean, isn't really a problem, I guess. But uh, because of that, he would rather use his resources to like work on things that are interesting to him. And I think porting his game to another console, even if it would make him an exorbitant amount of money isn't really something he's interested in. So the best I can hope is that, and I don't hope this, but I the best you can you can hope is is that maybe uh, he's he's low on funds at some point, and then uh, he needs to make a little quick cash, and then he would probably do it. Um, yeah. But otherwise, I doubt it'll it'll come to Switch, which makes me very sad because it's the perfect game for Switch. I mean, I could easily get it on PC, no problem. I just you know I, I like having games like that on the Switch because it's. You can yeah. play it anytime, anywhere. So puzzle puzzle games are great for the Switch. Um, do you do you own it right now? The the Switch or sorry, uh, the the Witness. No, I I don't I don't own any of um either of those games. Either it's the Witness okay. or the Talos Principle. They're it's, games I've been uh, interested in, but I just haven't gotten them. It's on Humble Bundle right now. Um, with like they they have like a big like COVID relief something it's like the most generous humble bundle i've ever seen there's like mm -hmm. 50 games on it. it's like 25 or 30 bucks but a lot of them are like really good games and the witness is one of them so 
Yeah, I, I think I looked at that before, and there was a bunch of games I wasn't that interested in, and yeah. I, I don't really need a, a huge backlog. So probably, if anything, yeah. I'll just... <laughs> now, now that you've pointed out that The Witness probably won't come to Switch, I'll probably just get it on PC. Yeah, most of the games I saw on that bundle that were interesting to me were ones I already got from like a previous hum Humble Bundle mm -hmm. or something, so I haven't gotten it. I thought about... I was like, oh, if I could just find a few that are exciting to me and justify the purchase i could like give away the codes yeah that's true uh, to other people but it's all right yeah i hadn't even thought about that but that's that's a good point either yeah. way so yeah but yeah those those games look really cool yeah they're awesome so let's get into some of the main interview questions and i'm gonna start off by talking about blimey cow so I want you to give me a sales pitch for, for people who have never seen the content or don't realize they've seen the content, perhaps. Okay, uh, so my brother and I and my sister, back at the very start of YouTube, just started putting up home videos that we made. We were really into the office at the time, and so we made like mockumentary style stuff just with our home video camera. Um, and we did that for several years. Uh, didn't really feel like we fit in the YouTube scene, whatever that was, and I guess still don't really feel that way. Um, but at a certain point, we we got some a little more professional gear and and started just doing the show weekly, um, and started kind of picking up an audience. And uh, we found that people sort of resonated to the more like homeschool related content that we did because we all grew up homeschooled, and so we did some like content for kids that maybe grew up homeschooled and now we're in college or we're, we're getting ready to move from homeschooling to college or maybe kind of grew up in that uh, Christian uh, church bubble um, and we're kind of, you know, getting a little bit older and starting to look around and, and starting to just kind of figure out what they really thought about the world and, and, all, and that sort of thing. And so we sort of catered to that audience and... Um, make content like that and I wouldn't say it's really catering because it I mean that's just sort of who we are and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the kind of stuff we're interested in that we think about and that we think is interesting and so uh, yeah I mean we we kind of our channel sort of blew up back in like 2011 or 2012 and we sort of overnight had like a bunch more people watching us because we had a video or two that that did that kind of got spread around and did really well um, and, uh, so in the, in the years that have followed, you know, we've, we've just, I feel like we've done a pretty good job of maintaining the audience that yeah. we built. Um, and it's kind of gotten to the point now where, uh, like we have a Patreon campaign, uh, that we have a lot of fun kind of keeping up with that community. And a lot of the people that become patrons will say like, yeah, I started watching you guys in middle school and now I'm, I'm getting ready, uh, to finish up college or, um, uh, you know stuff like that which is really crazy but like uh it's it's awesome like it's it's been a lot of fun like it's it's mostly like comedy stuff but mm -hmm. as we've gotten older and you know kind of referencing how kids have sort of grown up with our content some of the stuff we make now is a little bit sometimes has to do with like our lives personally or what's going on with yeah. us. You know, we've had a lot of big life changes over the last few years. Jordan got married. Uh, Kelly and I had a son. Um, so yeah, so it's been it's been a lot of fun, and I feel like uh, um, it's like uh, maybe our videos don't quite get the the viewership that they used to, but the community is like so. I feel like the community is much bigger than it ever was before. Yeah. Uh, which is really fun, and and we host like a, a yearly event here in Nashville for our patrons. That's really ex exciting, and everybody looks forward to. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I, like I, it's weird for me to, you know, you ask me to give a pitch about the the videos, and I end up talking about the community around it. But I like that's. I feel like that's at this point kind of what's really important to me mm -hmm. is sort of the, the 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 friends we made along the way. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a, it's been a lot of fun and you know folks like you Nathan that I've talked to on and off over the years um, it just means a lot to me and so it's been a lot of fun so I love making videos I don't know what my life would be like without making videos um, but the other thing I'm really passionate about is just like you know encouraging people and 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 uh, 
getting along with people and and folks that you know maybe feel like they don't have like a home or like they don't they don't quite fit in because I always felt that way growing up that we've kind of like cultivated a community that like lets you know like hey you might not feel like you fit in other places but we all feel that way so Mm -hmm. you kind of have a you kind of have a place to hang out here so that's like the when people become patrons or they start watching our videos that's the thing that I I want them to kind of get more than anything else so um, and then you know making videos is a lot of fun too like coming up with jokes and writing comedy and and writing stuff to make to try to get people to think about things differently and Mm -hmm. um, it's fun it's a it's a lot of fun very cool yeah I, I think I started watching you guys probably around 2013 or 2014 i know mm-hmm. it was before we had kids um and i think that the last time you and i talked like through this format um or rather through uh when we were doing that podcast with with ben stegner our mutual friend yeah um that i, I was looking at it on on uh, my google hangouts thing and it said like 2015 and it was <laughs> it was like uh, so that it was five months before my son was born my oldest son wow so it's just kind of it's interesting seeing how much things have changed over the years. Yeah. And occasionally, um, I'll come across one of the old um, Messy Mondays episodes, and you know, watch through and just be like, "Oh my goodness, everything's changed so much since then." <laughs> for for you guys and for us and everything else, yeah. it's it's really. I feel fun. like there's like there's so few things in in my life that I connected with enough like a piece of content that I connected with enough that like I associate it with like a, a, a time in my life Mm -hmm. or that like when I watch it, I think, Oh wow. When I, when I first watched this, my life was really different. Yeah. And, and, but the things, the pieces of content or, or the pieces of art or however you want to say that, that, um, that are that way for me, like, really mean a lot to me and mm-hmm. I know that they will always mean a lot to me even yeah. if they're not things that I that I really connect with anymore you know what I mean like I always have a special place in my heart for that and so that when I talk to people that maybe watched this a long time ago and maybe they've recently come back you know Ben Stegner you met, you brought up Ben mm-hmm. I just recently reconnected with him I hadn't talked to him in years mm-hmm. um and it's just been it, it, it's really cool like I, it's it's like really it, it's such a cool honor that like for 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 some some people out there like our videos are like that thing like they're they're my homestar runner you know what i mean like something yeah. that, like maybe i don't watch as much anymore but when i when i go back and watch homestar it just it takes me it takes me back and like i just have a love for it um that i that that I can't really put into words Mm -hmm. and even, you know, I don't really watch Homestar anymore, but like I just picked up the Trogdor board game. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I still, even though I'm not really in that world anymore, like it's still, that world is still important to me. So, uh, it's just, it's, it's been really fun and it's something I could have never anticipated, um, in my wildest dreams that like, that's kind of what it would have become, but it's just, it, it's neat and it's cool. And it's, it's fun that people that, watched our stuff a long time ago now they have kids and you know we've had people come up to us or email me and say like hey so like i watched your videos growing up and now my kids are gonna watch your videos too and that's just like oh that's really cool you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah uh just as a side note speaking of uh strong bad and all that yeah did did you happen to see um a mock-up someone did of the ps5 controller with strong mad superimposed on it oh no but that makes sense (laughs) Thing. I'll have to send you send send you that uh, yeah. later. You could probably even just find it. It's up on Polygon. Oh, um, okay. Was one of, one of the places, and I guess like they sent it to the the Strong Bad official Twitter account, and and of course you know the the guys over there responded to it. And it was pretty I just funny. found it. <laughs> <laughs> They've got one of uh, 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 him as a Strong Mad too. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So getting back to the questions. You, you kind of touched on this, but what was it that really led you to create Blimey Cow? Um, man, I just really, I just really always liked making videos. I was always interested in movies. I remember growing up, like, uh, before the, like, the internet was a thing, like, 
pulling out the paper every day and like seeing what movies were playing at the theater and like memorizing what each movie was rated uh and stuff like that like i've just always been really interested in movies and in video and and stuff like that but at the time you know uh like nathan you're you're you and i are about the same age i think so like you 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 know you remember what it was like when we were growing up and like there wasn't really there wasn't really video editing software they, yeah. it, you know c cameras were <laughs> i mean cameras are still expensive but mm -hmm. when people complain about you know, oh, that camera is expensive. Now I'm like, man, you don't like that camera didn't exist when we were growing up. Like, and if it right. did, it was like ten thousand dollars. Now, now you can get like a, you can shoot professional YouTube video for like three hundred bucks if you find yeah. a, you know a deal on eBay. Like, it's insane. And it was not that way before. And even if you could find a camera like that, there was nothing to edit with. So. Mm -hmm. So it, it really was just, it wasn't like what brought me into it. It was literally just, I was always frustrated that there was no good way to, to shoot stuff in like a professional way. And so as soon as it became uh, more financially responsible uh, to be able to find this stuff, I, I was on board. So the first time I found like a, like a prosumer video editing program, uh, I got it, and the first time I, you know, shot a video with somebody, and they had like a, a camera that shot really good video, and I was like, "How much did that cost?" And they were like, "Oh, it's about a thousand bucks." I was like, "I can save a thousand dollars." Yeah. Um. Because I mean, that's a lot of money, but like again, like the cameras were not like the kind of cameras we have now just did not exist right. pre two thousand, mm -hmm. like. So as soon as, as soon as that stuff was available, I just, I, I jumped on and I was excited, but most of the stuff that, you know, I, the editing software came before the cameras, yeah. I feel like in terms of like prosumer, uh, and like cheaper. Uh, so we, I was editing with home video footage for years, yeah. uh, before, um, I, do you, do you, do you know, um, that YouTube channel, the Julian Smith he doesn't really do YouTube anymore, but are you familiar with him at all? Um, I may have seen him come up in my suggested, but I, I don't think okay. I've ever watched any of it. So he was a buddy of mine. He used to, I, I, he might still live here. I don't know. He, I know he moved to California for a while. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but um, we were buddies growing up and uh, he, but he was very driven. Like he wanted to make his stuff look amazing. Mm -hmm. and it was honestly kind of uh, uh discouraging growing up because I was like, man, I'll never make stuff that looks as nice as, as Julian stuff does. But what I didn't realize at the time, because I didn't really watch enough YouTube, was to be like, oh no, Julian was making the best looking stuff on YouTube. Most people were doing stuff that looked like what I was doing. Mm. Uh, and, but he had a, like a, a, a Canon DSLR camera mm -hmm. and he, 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 he had like a nicer camera, like a multi thousand dollar camera. And he eventually moved over to this Canon DSLR. And I was like, why did you change? And he was like, well, it's lighter and it was cheaper uh, and it works just as well. And I was like, are you serious? And so I picked up that same camera in like 2010. And this was right after I got married. Um, in fact, yeah, that was how I got the camera uh, was we got money from our wedding. And I was like, Kelly, can we like... I, you know, I was, I was working at a, at a TV station at the time and I wasn't really happy. And I was like, Kelly, like, can we use some of that wedding money for the, for a camera? Because like, I, I want to get back into this stuff and I, I don't want to be working at this TV station forever. And, uh, so she agreed and, and we got this camera and, uh, at the time we hadn't really been doing too much video stuff because I had just gotten married and graduated and Jordan was in college, my little brother. And, uh, so we kind of slowly picked it back up and I put out some stuff on the Blimey Cow channel and eventually I talked Jordan into starting a weekly show which became our show Messy Mondays which we're still doing to this day. And um, yeah, so there you go. There you go. You know, interesting note about, you know, cameras today versus back back in, you know, when we were kids is um I, I recently, um, after after my father passed away, I, mm -hmm. I I brought home a bunch of old home movies on VHS, and I digitized all of them. So I, I hooked up a VCR to my PC, you know, played the footage and recorded it, and then did a bunch of editing to put it in, like, a DVD format and stuff for, for my family. Mm -hmm. um, 
But it's just interesting, you know, looking back at stuff like that where, you know, you had this big bulky camera back in the 90s that you were using versus now we have yeah. a better camera than that on a little tiny smartphone. Yeah. Even, even on you a know, really cheap smartphone. <laughs> right. Uh, the new, the newer iPhones, I mean, there will be times when I'm just like, if we're just doing a quick pickup or something, I'm like, just pull out the phone. Let's just do it on there. Like, if it's on the screen for like four seconds, nobody's even going to know the difference. Yeah. Like, it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. So, um, when exactly did Blimey Cow start? Yeah. Um, well, it was, pre well, I guess it wasn't really pre-YouTube. It was, it was pre YouTube being what YouTube is mm -hmm. where it was like when you think of videos on the internet it's just YouTube yeah. so I would have back then it was 2005 I would have gone on yahoo.com and I would have searched you know places to upload your videos online and funnily enough the the the, the search result I got was for something called Google video uh, this was before Google bought YouTube and they had their own streaming platform and it was terrible. And I think this is why they eventually uh, bought YouTube because mm -hmm. theirs was awful. But yeah. this was all I thought existed at the time. And so we originally uploaded our content to Google video. And within a year, uh, I believe I had heard of YouTube and I was like, this looks a lot better. Because I, I think if, with Google video, it was so strange. You had to like download a separate piece of software that you use to upload the videos yeah. and then you went to the web browser and the videos were there and i was like this is a pain in the butt so i found youtube and uh, you could just upload right there in the browser I was like this is perfect and so it took a while um but i moved all of our content over from google video to to youtube so i think our youtube channel says that we started in 2006 but really we started the year before that okay makes sense so it's been like 15 years now. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, like, going back to, like, your old videos, um, the Brother Brother Time episodes, and uh, just how young you guys look, especially Jordan. <laughs> just, yeah. like, oh my goodness, you guys look so young. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, just even, even compared to, you know, your later videos, and, I mean... See here, how old would Jordan have been when you guys started? Uh, I think he was like fourteen. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, he's he'll be he'll be twenty nine this year. Yeah. And yep. and remind me again the age difference between you two. Uh, uh, three and a half years, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be he'll be twenty nine this year. I'll be thirty two. Okay. So very interesting, just looking back at all that, and of yeah. course knowing that you guys started so long ago. Yeah. Um, but you said that there was a pretty, what, there was a pretty big gap between like when you guys were doing brother, brother time, for example, and then started doing messy Mondays. Yeah. Well, we started that show. I mean, at the time that wasn't really a show. It was just, that was what we were like, ah, let's just do mockumentary style videos. And mm -hmm. over the years we kind of realized, oh, we sort of accidentally built a storyline around yeah. that. So eventually later on, several years down the line after, you know, our, our videos had more of an audience and people had gone back and watched those old home video style mm -hmm. like mockumentary stuff and, and they they liked it and I was like man I almost took this stuff down I didn't realize people were gonna like this stuff but I think it was just I think to your point about like Jordan looks so young I think it was fun for people to go back and see like how young we were when we got yeah. started and I think it also like kind of encouraged kids to like keep doing what they were doing on YouTube, you mm -hmm. know, as the years have gone on, you know, everything on YouTube looks so professional now yeah. and it can be kind of like discouraging when, you know, you don't have a professional camera, but you still want to make videos. So I wanted to leave that stuff on there just to be like, Hey, look, you know, we're just, we're just normal kids too. You know what I mean? Like, and we just happen to get a bigger audience on here. So, um, but yeah, about brother, brother time, like, Eventually, I, I sort of condensed the main storyline videos mm -hmm. and put them all in a playlist and said, hey, here's season one. And eventually, like five years ago, uh, we we released season two, and I'm still working on season three, and it, uh. we're going to do it this year, hopefully, uh, with all this craziness going on. Um, but uh, yeah, we had told people we were going to do it this year. And I was actually, I've actually been thinking about that this week. I'm, I'm trying to kind of work on writing it, but... Um. Yeah. Do you know yet if it's going to be like released all at once, or is it going to be more of a weekly thing? 
I think we'll do weekly again just okay. because it's it's fun to it's fun to kind of talk like hear what people are talking about with with each episode. Um, I kind of like that model. I don't really like the Netflix like release everything all at once. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Like I don't know. Like my favorite show is right now is Better Call Saul, mm-hmm. and I was able you know because I didn't I I didn't see Breaking Bad until. The, the 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 show that's like the the sequel to that show but they're doing the prequel second yeah and um i had not seen that show when it was on tv so i got caught up on it on netflix and it was really fun watching that show so quickly and then i was able to get caught up on the first two or three seasons of better call saul so the last two seasons the four and five i've watched on tv and at first it kind of frustrated me uh having to kind of not be able to just start the next episode because it's so good. But now I kind of appreciate it because now I can kind of really sit there and think about like, oh, what were the themes of that episode? Or what? Let, let's go back and watch it again. And this time, like, pay attention. Now that we know what's going to happen, kind of pay attention to like how they sort of foreshadowed earlier what was going to happen. Or why do they, you know, why do they put that camera right there for this shot? What were they trying to say? And all this stuff. Like, I really enjoy that. So um, anyways, I, I think there was a time where I, I was more of like, on board with like the binging but i think at this point i kind of like the kind of slower quieter uh one week at a time model Mm -hmm. how has it been doing videos every week i mean and you guys have been doing the messy monday stuff for something like 10 years right yeah and just in the last like year and a half or so uh, we kind of moved, like, we had been just doing Messy Mondays every week, and then mm-hmm. if we did any other kind of videos, releasing them on a different day of the week. But just in the last year and a half or so, we've kind of, like, have changed formats or, or kind of released other things on Mondays as well. But, yeah, we've put out a video every week since, like, the middle of 2011, which is wow. pretty crazy. So, like, I, I really don't know what I would do if I wasn't, making videos like it's just like it's just a part of my life at this point Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i don't even know what what i would say about it would just be weird not doing it yeah i you know what i mean like it would just be strange i don't i don't know what else to say about it other than that i'm just so used to doing (laughs) i don't know what i would do if i wasn't doing it so how how do you manage to keep content fresh with so many years of doing this I think as long as you're still, like, doing stuff or writing about stuff that's, like, fun to you Mm -hmm. or that, like, if there's something I'm really thinking a lot about in a week, a lot of times, like, making a video about it is, like, the, is, like, the best release Mm -hmm. to, to, like, let it go. Yeah. Uh, so there'll be times where, like, I'm really thinking about something kind of struggling with an idea or something like that. And eventually I'm just like, I just need to write a video about this. I don't even know what I think about this. I just want to, I just need, I just need to, we just need to make something funny about this. I think that'll make me feel better. Definitely. Uh, And, and that, and that's been, I mean, that's been very nice and therapeutic over the years. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I mean, part of it, man, is just the, like, when you have, like, if it's just you making videos just on your own, I, that would be hard. But since, you know, it's me and my brother and my wife and Jordan's wife. Um, I don't, it's just fun. Like, it's just that it's a fun excuse to hang out. It's a, it's a fun excuse to get together. Like one of the shows we do is a question where people write in, like ask my brother, like for like relationship advice or like life advice. Um, and that show is a lot of fun to do. And it's fun that people like that show. Mm. And, um, it's just fun. I don't know. It, it, like, uh, as long as people enjoy it, like, we'll keep doing it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it again, like, it's not, I don't even know. I guess because I, I guess it's not that about keeping it fresh. It's just like keeping myself from getting bored. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, what would be something that would be fun? Like, what would, what's something that sounds interesting to me right now? Uh, and it's not like, oh, I've done every video I could possibly do. Cause it's like, that would be the same thing as like saying like, oh, what, what am I going to do today? Well, I've done so many other things already in life. I guess now I'm just done doing things. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, 
whenever when you find something, it doesn't even have to be videos. It's just like whatever you whatever you enjoy, whatever your hobby is, whatever you enjoy doing. Like you, you know, you find different ways to express yourself with within that medium. So um, it just feels different when it's a video because it's such like a a communicative format. So you feel like, oh, what if you run out of things to talk about or say? But it's just like, well, it's more than just like. Hey, here's a new idea. It can be like the way it makes people feel, or the way it makes people think about things, or it makes people laugh. So, um, I don't know. There's all kinds of different ways to think about it. Mm -hmm. So now that we've covered a lot of stuff regarding Blimey Cow, I want to know how you got your start in gaming. On what platform and with what game? Man, let's see. I mean, I've been playing. <laughs> I've been playing Nintendo so long, I don't even like. I don't even have a memory. It's like it's like Star Wars. Like, do you even have a memory of watching Star Wars? The like, uh, I do, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've just like always had Star Wars. I don't like. I don't remember finding out Darth Vader is Luke's dad. Like, I've just always known that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that I. I think my grandma probably got me a Nintendo. This might be a little revisionist history, but it, it would make sense. She probably got it for me around the time I was like two years old. So I've been playing like the NES since I was about two, and the first game I would have played would have been Super Mario. Um, the first like actual memory I have would be of getting a Super Nintendo for Christmas again from my grandma, who was very generous to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would, and the the first game I like remember getting excited. I remember knowing I was getting a Super Nintendo for Christmas. In fact, I think what might have happened was. Maybe she shipped it to my parents up here in Tennessee the first year we moved, maybe, or something. Anyways, like, I I knew I was getting it before I got it, and I was just I, I was so excited to play Super Mario World, and um, yeah, so I remember playing that game a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I would I was a Nintendo kid, one hundred percent. How do you respond to people who might say that you're too old to be gaming? Um. I mean, I get the, like, stereotype, you know, when people say that, like, I kind of, I get the idea. I think there's a healthy way, like, I feel like it's different now than it would have been when I was younger, because video games have just existed now, like, mm -hmm. they're just a part, they're a part of society. It would be like yeah. saying, you're too old for movies or something. Yeah. Um, I think the thing, the difference, though, is that there are Video games, by and large, are still geared, even if the content would say otherwise, they're still geared at, like, teenagers. Yeah. Um, like, in terms of, like, what kinds of things you're doing and what the, like, goals are. Um, and with movies or other things, there there are certainly, like, things that are meant for adults. And I don't mean like in a in a in like an explicit content way. Mm -hmm. I I mean like things like ideas and yeah. and ways of communicating that are meant for for mature adults. Uh, and video games, I don't. I think there are some, but I I don't think they're that way. But I think that they're geared more towards teenagers and and young adults because those are the ones that are buying the games and that are still playing them. But I think there are still. There, there are still folks like like you and me that grew up on games, and and I think it'll continue to be more and more that way as as time goes on. That like you'll see guys that are older and older still playing games. But I think that there's a healthy way to do it. I mean, I know it's more difficult now, um, and th and that's okay. Uh, now that I have Isaac, um, my son, he's um, he's ten months old now, and you know it's certainly been uh, harder to, to play things now that now that he's uh here and so it either becomes a thing where I, I you know i play a little bit at the end of the night but then you know that's taking away time from hanging out with my wife um so you know it's certainly like i i think that there's a healthy way to do it and i think there's an unhealthy way to do it and as long as you're aware that like you know you shouldn't let it kind of take over your life then it's fine i think it also helps if your spouse is into video games as well like i think that if they, they like playing games that makes it easier as as well but i know not not everybody is that way so yeah what would you say are your top five games of all time or even just right now um definitely the witness 
is on that list. I just love that game so much. Like, when I talk about, like, games that are meant for adults, or that, like, like, if you showed it to somebody who didn't play games, and, and you could say, like, this is, like, an example of, like, what video games can be. It doesn't have to be just shooting and blowing things up and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Like, I think The Witness is a really good example. And, like, the, the ideas it raises and, and the, the, the things, that, the emotions and, and stuff it sort of evokes are really interesting. Yeah. And, like, I don't know how much you know about that game, but you're basically on an island and you're solving, like, line puzzles that are on these panels. Mm-hmm. And... It, if you just look at it without playing it, it looks like it would get really boring and tedious, but it's really not. It's one of the most interesting. It's one of the most interesting games that you could play, and it gets to a, it gets to a place where, the game is like communicating with you, but there are no words, hmm. and so, there will be time. It's so strange. It's so funny. Like I was playing it yesterday. And there are, I'm solving puzzles, and the and the puzzles are like actually telling you jokes. <laughs> and I, I don't want to. I don't really want to get any like like uh, explain any deeper than that because I don't want to give anything away. But like you get to a point where the puzzles are like making you laugh because they're they're like, and I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Like it's just it's such an interesting game. It's like it's sort of like this give and take where like you you're you're almost playing the game against the the person who designed the game it's like they're saying to you okay now you learned this but so what if i did this thing and you're like oh how would i how would i solve this and then it's like okay now that you solved that twist what if i changed it back to this you're like oh now you're adding both of those things together well how would i solve that and it's very interesting um and i really think that like i mean i'm sure that other games will come along um, but I think that in like the decades to come, like we'll look back on the witness as like a. I know a lot of people have said it's a great game, but I still really feel like it's an underrated game. Like it's gonna, it's gonna be remembered for a long time to come. It's it's fantastic. Um, and the level, like he worked on it for so long, the level of care that went into it, it's amazing. But um, I really like Talos Principle. I really like Portal. Um, I love Super Metroid and I love Metroid Prime. Um, I think those are probably those are probably my favorite games if I had to pick five: Super Metroid, Metroid Prime, Talos Principle, Portal Two, and then The Witness. Okay. And I really like uh, Braid too, which was the guy mm-hmm. who made The Witness. That was yeah. his other game. It's called Braid. Yeah, I never finished Braid. I, I got to a certain point, I got stuck, and just never went back to it. But yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tough game, but it's it's very rewarding when you when you finally finish it. Yeah, I'm glad that you answered Portal Two. As being your favorite, because I was going to ask you which Portal you're talking about. Yeah. And I think Portal 2 is the correct answer, even though Portal 1 is great. I think that Portal 2 basically just kind of, like, they should have just, I mean, if Portal didn't already have the, um, the, the, the reputation it did, they could have probably just called Portal 2, just called it Portal. Yeah. Because Portal, Portal 2 has most of Portal 1, like the important stuff. Mm-hmm at the beginning of the game. You know what I mean? Like it, it kind of walks you right through all of that all that stuff again that you learned from the first game. So you're kind of just relearning everything and then it kind of once you understand the concepts that Portal One taught you, it, it actually takes you into the main storyline of the game. Mm-hmm. And it's just so perfect. I love games that like I love games where the mechanic of the game um actually makes sense with what you're doing. Yeah. So like in Portal it's like yeah you're the 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 laboratory wanted to wanted to see how smart people were if they could if they could get through like these trials basically. So solving puzzles in that game makes sense or like in Talos principle you can't really explain that one too much without getting spoilery but um basically there's a reason why you're having to uh, solve all of these puzzles. You're an, you're like you're an android, and that is your calling. Uh, and so the game is about kind of discovering like who created that calling and and why that's your calling. And then uh, in the witness, uh, the witness is a lot more kind of like cerebral and like subtle. But there is there are reasons why you're doing the things you're doing, and uh, and some of those reasons are within the game, and some of them are very meta. And the game is sort of about the idea of discovery and like what that like aha moment feels like and, mm-hmm. and, and how many different ways you can get like 
you can have that feeling uh, in, in, in all these different environments. And then Super Metroid and Metroid Prime, uh, it's they're basically platformers with like puzzle elements to them, but the puzzles are in that there are usually places that are locked off to you and you have to figure out how to get to them. Yeah. And those games I really just like more because I, I love the way they're designed. I think uh-huh. that they're really tight and clever. And um, if you really kind of... Super Metroid especially, but even a game like Metroid Prime, where I, I know over the years people have complained that, oh, there's a lot of backtracking. Sometimes you get confused about where you're going. But if you played through that game... Um, and you've already beat, beaten it before and you're playing through it another time, it actually, and so you kind of like already know, okay, I know when I get here, I need to do these things. Uh, so you 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 spend less time a little bit like frazzled or confused and you're actually spending more of your time sort of just enjoying yeah. how the how the game was created and designed. Uh, it, it actually is pretty tight. Like I remember that from the, from the previous time I played it, which it's been several years since I played through it again, but... Um, it is it is a pretty well designed and tight game too, and I just I, I love I remember when Metroid Prime came out. Part of why that's one of my favorite games is just that I remember when it came out. Everybody was so uh, skeptical of a 3D Metroid game because how would you how would you get that Metroid feeling of like discovery and like being locked off and having to unlock things? How would mm-hmm. you do that in a 3D space? Would it work, especially in like a first person shooter format? And I really think they did something with that game. And that game came out like almost 20 years ago. That they that has never been done since. Like nobody has ever done what they did with that game uh, again. So I'm really excited for Metroid Prime 4 on the Switch. It'll be interesting to see like what a new. I know it's the same studio making it, but a lot of the team is different now. So I'm yeah. I'll be really curious to see uh, whenever that game comes out, two or three years down the road. Um, hopefully, like fewer than three years down the road, but. We'll see. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I love those games. Yeah, me too. Um, as a quick side note, so Metroid-style games, um, I, I know you're more of an indie guy than anything else, and, you know, Nintendo. Have you tried playing any of, like, the Batman Arkham games or um, or God of War, even the new one? I started both of those games. I didn't get very far. I think... I just kind of struggle. I like those games. It's not that I don't like them. I just get bored, kind of. Mm. And it and it might. And I know that a lot of times you'll hear about games that say, "Oh, you have to get it like three or four hours into it, and then it kind of really opens up." And I just don't. I, I just don't have the patience sometimes for games like that. Um, I I'm trying to remember why I stopped playing God of War. I think it's just that it's like, okay, now go here, now do this, now go here, and it's it's. I just, I don't know. I just I get kind of bored, and and I don't I I don't mean that to be like oh I think it's dumb. Mm-hmm. I think just me personally I get bored by that. Um, and I've and I've meant to play Ar- Ar- Arkham City, um, but I wanted to play Asylum first, yeah. and I had that same kind of struggle with Asylum. But everybody has told me that City is better, so I really just need to turn on City and just say you know forget Asylum, just like watch through the go on YouTube, watch the ga- the, uh, the the cinematics or whatever, just so I know what the story is, uh, and then uh, go through it. I the the one developer that makes games like that that I, for some reason I I enjoy it. Maybe it's just that they're just so well made in terms of like the overall product that it kind of tricks me into like being able to deal with it is I really like the Naughty Dog games like Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've played all those and really enjoyed them. And I really liked The Last of Us. Um, I thought that it was, it did a few, I was telling my wife the other day, like it is kind of one of those, okay, now go here. Now figure out how to get up there. Now do this, now do that. But it there's a few times, and I won't like get spoilery or whatever, but there's a few times in that game where it does things that you're not expecting or it uh, it 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 knows that you're assuming it's going to do one thing and mm-hmm. it does something different and it takes you it takes you aback and because the game isn't really that long it's like 10 or 12 hours um it's it, it's worth dealing with some of like the the more repetitive stuff uh, just to kind of get to those moments and have those experiences which I think are pretty cool and I like the story of the last of us especially I thought it was really interesting yeah um, one thing I will say real quick is Arkham Asylum is a tighter Metroid style game because it's, okay. it's much more contained mm-hmm. city. It, if you, if you enjoy games that have like a sandbox kind of environment where there's a lot of 
collectibles all over the place and um, different, you know, tasks you can do, challenges, yeah. that sort of thing. City is a better game. Okay. I personally like City better, but okay. Asylum is still really good. Um, and with God of War, there are a lot of hidden secrets all over the place. Um, and the main thing is, is that even if you do nothing else, you should check out the story. As, as okay. a father of a son, I mean, the fact that you have a son, you need to check out the story. Yeah, I think when I first played it, I don't even think Kelly was pregnant at the time. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I should check that one out again. I know it's pretty cheap now. Did yeah. you uh, did you place the new Spider Man game when it came out? Oh well, uh, not when it came out, but I I I got or it like have a you year later. It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really liked it. that one too. Yeah. It, it, it may just be, I have to like really be into the story maybe, mm -hmm. and maybe because I just per I just like Spider Man in general, and I think games where you get to play as Spider Man are fun. Oh yeah. Uh, I can kind of deal with a little bit more of the repetitious stuff. Yeah. Um. So I really liked that game a lot, and I, I hope they make another one. It seemed like they were setting up for a second. Oh, they definitely are. There's no question about it. Yeah. I'm but. excited. I, I, I hope that uh, I hope that I hope they make they get that made. That would be cool. All right, so going back to the main interview questions, um, you pretty much already answered what you consider to be the most underrated game, which you said The Witness. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other games you would say, I mean, like, even just one other game that you would say is really underrated, in your opinion. Ooh. I think of a game that I like that I don't really hear people talking too much about. See, the thing is normally, like, I normally wait to see if a lot of people say a game is really good mm -hmm. before I pick it up. Yeah. Uh, so I don't I don't normally just find, like, little hidden gems. Yeah. Um, I mean, I already talked about Talos Principle. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other puzzle games I really like that, I don't know. Um, I always really liked those, uh, the, um, those motocross games, the Trial HD, mm -hmm. um, and Trials Evolution. Those aren't, I wouldn't say those are, like, super underrated, but those are fun because, uh, they, al they almost get puzzly by the end. Like, yeah. uh, they're, they're like, they're like platformers that have a little bit of puzzle built into them. So those are pretty interesting, and I don't really hear as many people talk about those games as back in the old Xbox 360 days. But they put one out recently, uh, came out on Switch and, and the other platforms, and uh, it was pretty fun. I haven't gotten too far into that one, um, but uh, I need to pick that one back up. So I'll just I'll just go with Trials. If anybody hasn't played Trials, that's definitely one that everybody everybody I played that one pl played uh, that one with uh, enjoys it. All right, so then what would you say is your favorite game or game series? Uh, definitely my favorite game series is Metroid. Um, and then my favorite game of all time is The Witness. Okay. But I, I know I've already talked a bunch yeah. about it, so <laughs> I won't go into it much more. But, uh, yeah, I just think The Witness, I think that's a game that really, like, pushed the art form of like what video games could be forward like and I think it really like in the way that when Myst came out in the 90s it mm -hmm. was like whoa this is what a th video games can be this now yeah I think that that the witness sort of was like okay let me uh, but now you go back and play Myst and it's like a lot of just like frustrating like click 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 where do yeah. I click what do I do what do, what's going on and it's like an interesting game it's just like it was made for a different time. Mm -hmm. And I think that The Witness now has is, says, like, hey, this is modern mist. It's like yeah. a game that says, this is what this is what video games can be. Um, it doesn't have to just be fighting, things exploding, guns going off. Yeah. Though those games are fun, too. And I'm not, like, like, I love, you know, I grew up playing Halo, and I still love Halo. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I think that, I think that there are, I think that the witness is just a, a game that's going to kind of stand mm -hmm. apart for for many years to come. And I, I hope I I feel like a lot of people gave it a gave it a you know if it's ended up on a humble bundle for cheap or or free somewhere they've picked it up and and, and gotten a you know past one section of the game and got frustrated and gave up given up. And I think that see this is the thing I have a I have a tendency if I feel like a game isn't super well designed I get frustrated with it and I give up on it because I'm like well if if the game isn't like guy 
not that I want a game to guide me, but I've, I the game should understand like what its player is is going to do and it mm-hmm. should kind of like guide you to do the correct things in a way that teaches that teaches them without showing like actually having to show them what to do. And yeah. so if I ever play a game that feels like okay, now I'm just in this area and I don't know what the heck's going on. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to do? Why blah blah blah. You know, then that frustrates me and I'm like I don't want to waste my time with this. And that's why I like a game like Portal where literally like you enter an area and it's like okay, you're in this little room now. Everything you need to get out of this room is inside of this room. How do you do it? And so it's like, okay, I know that I don't need to like backtrack to find something. I know I don't need to have further knowledge that I don't have. Everything I need is in this little space. How do I get out? It seems impossible, but I know that the designers had have play tested this and know okay these were the you know these are the things that people are going to wonder about when they get into this space how do we kind of trick them into feeling like they're going to be able to do it and then they can't and then they have to find a new way to do it i love that kind of stuff a lot and i feel like the witness uh is a game that is different than portal because when you when you walk up to a puzzle in the witness A lot of times it does presuppose that you have information that you don't have, but it's so well designed that that you get to a point in that game where if, how do I say this, like, you are able to trust the designer that, uh... And I and I mean that in like the 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 space of like playing the video game, but also like on like a more like grand like meta uh, uh, scale. That like that's kind of what the game is about is this idea of discovery and like knowing that like there is somebody who designed all of these things that we see around us, and you can trust that there's a design to everything. So even if you get to a a point in your life slash in this game, the witness, where you feel like I don't know what the answer is. It's almost like the designer saying, that's okay. You can leave this place and go and go find something else. And maybe along the way, you'll discover what it was you needed to know in order to get through this trial. And I've just never played a game that was so, uh, that, that was so well-spoken and so, uh, trustworthy without like actually having to say a word. It's just so interesting, and it's like it's a game where no matter how many like I've played through that game now, I've completely beaten it once, and then I've played through many sections of it many times. Like I, sometimes it's just fun to go explore that island, but I still get to puzzles, and I legitimately don't remember like how to do them, and I have to sit there for an hour and read and relearn like like re refire up the, the the those portions of my brain that like learned how to do that the first time. It's just so interesting and it's it's a really fun game too that once you've played through it to go online, go on YouTube and like f- watch people play through it for the first time and kind of watch them make the same uh mistakes and then learn the same things that you had to learn. It's it's all very interesting. It, in fact in in a way it's almost like like having a like having a child and like watching them like learn to walk or learn learn to speak like all these things that you previously had to learn to do and so you're kind of getting to watch somebody else like oh you don't you know you get to this little really simple puzzle and you don't even know how to solve this thing uh so it's fun to kind of like watch somebody learn for the first time how to do something that you once struggled with yourself it's just really interesting i love that game so much i hope that everybody gives it a chance at some point in their lives because i really think it's worth the effort yeah <clears throat> I think I think you pretty much sold me on it. I'll, um, you know, I was trying to figure out what game to use as footage for this video, and I'll probably just uh, grab the witness. <laughs> nice. It's so, great. Yeah, I mean, not that I really need to start another game right now. Cause <laughs> I have so many games I'm playing, but yeah, yeah, uh, that's still. Sounds like a plan. So it's a good one. It's a good one because it's a game that you can turn off and come back to if you uh-huh. need to. But as long as you are, you know, you are sure to. And this is, I'll tell you, I'll give you one other kind of example of why the game is so interesting. Because as you're playing through it, um, you are learning a lot. Like I've said, without like any words being spoken to you, so you have a lot of language in in your brain that you don't quite know how to verbalize. But it's like a, a kind of like an unspoken language between you and the game. Um, so there would be certain points in the game the first time I played through it several years ago, um, where I needed help, um, like 
solving a puzzle and so my wife would walk in and say what are you doing and I would say well I'm trying to figure out how to solve this puzzle you see and then I would have to for the first time like I've been playing this game for you know tens of hours and for the first time I had to sit there and actually verbalize all the things I had learned and it's like such a surreal thing because it's like okay we'll see so these squares over here you have to divide these squares but you can make a mistake and that's okay because of this one right here that allows you to make one mistake in this one but also these two stars over here have to stay separate from these other two and you have to like you, so you have to learn and, and a lot of times just verbalizing it actually helps you solve the puzzle because you just had it all in your brain for so long that actually speaking it kind of like almost like fires up a different part of your brain that says hey now you're communicating verbally this thing that you've just known in your head and the fact that you're doing that is going to actually help you solve this puzzle because now you're explaining it to somebody it's just really it's just, i've never i've just never had that experience the only other game i've had a similar experience to this um I'll, okay I'll, i'm going to change my answer about underrated game if you've never played the stanley parable then you should pick that one up. I think they're going to port it to Switch at some point. But the Stanley Parable is the only other game I've played where I had like, like almost like a meta experience to the degree that I've had uh, with The Witness, where like it's just like, it's just like so interesting because it's like it's like no other game you've ever played where like you're talking about it after you're finished with it, but you also don't want to talk about it because you don't want to give too much away. It's just it's like a game that immediately makes you say like, here you have to play this. Like I and I want to watch you play this too. Like I remember one of the first time. Have you ever played the Stanley Parable, Nathan? No, it's another one of those on my list. Okay, that one that one's easier to just pick up. It's not a very long game. It's I'll uh, I won't get spoilery, but. That game is as long as you want it to be. You can sit there and play for five minutes. You can sit there and play it for five hours. It's it's as much as you want to get out of it. But that game, and I really don't want to give anything away because it's so interesting if you just never played it. That game makes you want to like play through it and understand it and then hand it to somebody else and say, I, I want to sit here and watch you play this for the first time because watching their reactions to things that are happening and... Especially when you like find all sort of the hidden secrets of the game. It's just very interesting and it and I like games too that sort of have a, like a clear purpose where like you finish it and you feel like okay I know what the designer was was trying to say with this game and the Stanley Parable is a game like that um, that, I, that I think is really interesting. So yeah, definitely check that one out too. <laughs> all right. Uh, is there a game or a game series that was completely off your radar but ended up being something you loved? Um. Hmm. Not see. I just at this point I don't have that many. I don't have much time to play new things, so I either kind of default to games I've played before that I can kind of jump in and out of quickly, um, or I I pick up something new. And I it's normally like more of like a one-off game mm -hmm. um so i yeah i, I don't I, I guess probably i guess probably not i, guess, I probably okay. wouldn't have an answer for that one unfortunately that's fair so now i want to start transitioning over into the other side of dads and gaming yeah uh that's you know the fatherhood side but before we get into that I want to talk about what it is specifically that uh, you do to earn an income. I mean, is it all through YouTube or uh, do you uh, do other things as well? So, yeah, it's mostly YouTube. Um, and then I do some freelance stuff on the on the side occasionally uh, in the in the realm of like video stuff. Or uh, so I might do some video editing uh, for, for a client or um some podcast editing just depending like currently right now i don't have too much of that going on but it may pick up again soon um but the, the so the main source of income yeah is just youtube and then um i'm also a travel agent um it's mostly uh booking like D disney destinations uh -huh. uh, so i've been doing that for several years now um, so hopefully all this craziness doesn't last too much longer because this has been kind of a pain but yeah um but uh, yeah, normally that's a uh, that's a really fun and uh, good little uh, stream of revenue, uh, because I just I've you know we I grew up in South Florida or I was born in South Florida and we have family down there, so I kind of just grew up going to Disney World and, and stuff, and I've just loved it as I've become an adult, and uh, 
just have a lot of knowledge about it in my head. And I was like, I got to find a way to make some money off of this, or it's just yeah. kind of sad how much I know about Disney World. <laughs> and uh, so finally, I was like, I just try tri being a travel agent. I love it. I, it's fun. It's it's really fun helping clients. You know, Disney World is a very overwhelming place to visit, so it's yeah. fun making it easy for people. Because if you don't have somebody who knows what they're talking about, uh, you can you can get down there and get very overwhelmed very quickly. So. Uh, I have, have fun making it easy for people. But yeah, those are those are my main sources of income. Okay. So how long have you been married now? Uh, do you know what? August is going to be 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. Um, assuming, well, whether it's a good assumption or not, but assuming Corona Chan is gone by that point, uh, do you have any specific plans for your 10th anniversary? Uh, well, we were maybe going to go down to Disney World, um, but I was, I, I'm still trying to decide if it's worth kind of all the pain and yeah. hassle of, of going down there just because Isaac is still so young. Mm -hmm. Like, would it be better to, to, to save that trip for a year from now, maybe? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. More likely than not, we will end up going to uh, Gatlinburg, which is uh, about three hours east of here, and it's uh, up in the Great Smoky Mountains. Um, we'll probably just rent a cabin or, or something like that and just chill for a few yeah. days. I, th I feel like that might be more Isaac speed because he's, Definitely. he's still a little uh, young. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll end up doing something, hopefully. We'll see. And I know you said this earlier, but how long have you been a dad now? I've been a dad for 10 months, born in June. It's been awesome. And that kind of answers my next question, but I want a little more details. So yeah. how how would you say your experience has been as a dad? Uh man, it's been it's been so fun. It's been awesome. So um yeah, I mean, like I said, we've been married almost 10 years now, and there was never really a time where we were like not trying to have kids mm -hmm. uh so we really we we thought it was just not something that was going to happen uh so it was a very special surprise uh when we when we found out kelly was pregnant and so it's just uh it's been um amazing um yeah i don't really know how else to kind of describe it but it's just it's just been such a nice gift and a, a blessing to us mm -hmm. and you know, it's just there's really not a day that goes by where I'm just like, man, I'm just so grateful for for Isaac and yeah, uh, so grateful for what a, you know what a blessing he's been to us and how much fun he is and yeah, it's it's been really good. What's the most surprising thing you've learned in your short time parenting? Uh, I guess how much of it ends up just kind of feeling like it comes naturally after a few like after a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like a lot, I, you know, I've always been kind of scared to pick up kids mm -hmm. and stuff. I, like I always wanted to be a dad, but, you know, when I was handling other people's children, especially like infants, it all, I was always nervous. Oh, I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to hold them the wrong way. I'm going to drop yeah. it, you know, things like that. And, uh, and so that was one of the first things, you know, I think the nurse could tell I was, a little what uh after they after isaac was born they you know they bring him in that like little nursery room to weigh him and stuff and they brought me in there uh and uh the, i think the nurse could tell i was a little nervous and uh, she was like just just so you know he's he's not nearly as fragile as you think he is yeah and uh and so i've i've just kind of hung on to that <laughs> but yeah. yeah i mean a lot of it like you know, i had never changed a diaper before isaac was born mm -hmm. i think i did the math the other day i think i've changed probably like over a thousand diapers now and uh yeah it's just been uh it's been good it's been a lot of fun like all the things i was nervous about have been easy um yeah yeah i, I guess maybe the thing that was most surprising is what they say about sleep deprivation like actually is real like that's yeah that's a thing where like you have to kind of keep in mind like okay in a month, it won't be this hard. In a month, it won't be this hard. You just kind of have to hang on to like it's gonna, it's going to get easier because when it, when you're in the middle of it, you feel like I'm never gonna sleep again. Like I'm never <laughs> yeah. going to get a, I'm never gonna get more than three hours of sleep at a time ever again. And that's you know, that it eventually passes. Yeah. <laughs> What's something you wish you'd realized sooner in parenting? Uh. Ooh. I don't know. I guess uh, 
I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of the things... I think a lot of it... I'm I give I'm trying to give myself grace that I'm you know this is the first time I'm doing this and mm -hmm. so I'm 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 learning you know just like Isaac is learning how to how to be a little human I'm learning how to be a dad and uh you know I'm just trying to be very present with him uh so that you know anytime he looks over at me I'm you know looking at him uh and I'm not, you know, like got my nose in my phone or, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, I think maybe I, I think maybe I would, it would have been nice to know, uh, that like that phone addiction is actually like a thing that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. Um, and that I need to, I need to start working on that now while he's so little that he's not super aware because now he is aware and it, it makes me feel really bad if uh, you know I, I'm 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 I got my nose in my phone and he looks over at me and you know I, I I'm I'm who knows what just just goofing off like literally like not even doing anything I just I just happen to be looking at my phone uh, so yeah I, I feel like that's something that I wish I uh, I could have kind of nipped in the bud earlier because now I'm I'm still kind of having to work through it yeah and to be fair you know. Kids, I mean, you know, I don't know about, like, your experience growing up, but at least for me, I always found that even though, like, my dad would watch a fair amount of TV in his off time and, mm -hmm. you know, like, my mom would be reading sometimes, that it's not necessarily always a bad thing to not be, you know, giving them your undivided attention. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that you should be glued to your phone all the time because that's it's not good for you anyway but right 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 um even so you know some sometimes kids can also learn that it helps them to learn that they're not always the center of attention and hmm. they don't have to be mm -hmm. yeah and that and you know like take it take what i say with a grain of salt because i don't have a ton of experience in parenting i just know based on the experience i have combined with you know what I went through as a kid myself, right? And just kind of looking back at what I learned from from my parents. Um, yeah, that's. I think. Yeah, I think that it's. I think that like, I never growing this. I guess this is the thing. I never. I think I I more because I, I do agree with what you're saying. So I'm trying to think of why I'm still hesitant about what you said because I, mm -hmm. I do agree with it, and but I think that from from my like my experience my vantage point like my parents were very were always very present for me um growing up even though that you're right like they would be doing other things but i but i always knew if i needed them they would be there for me yeah exactly so, right so yeah so I, so i am on board with that for sure i, I yeah. think that i think that the the where i come from with it is like if i'm literally just like just like doing nothing just like literally it's like oh I, I have to be looking at my phone oh yeah um then if that it, like if that's the case like i i guess i think about it more from isaac's perspective of like i want him to feel like secure that he's it's not like he's less important not yeah. that he's the center of attention but that like oh daddy would rather be looking at his phone then paying attention to me when I'm trying to get his attention, you know yeah. what I mean? Like so, no. so it, I, I think there's a there's a line there, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you got to kind of balance. But yeah, yeah like absolutely. I agree with what you're saying. I think that's it's just it's interesting. Yeah, and no, I mean like I, I do agree with that as well. I I mean especially when they're that age, it's probably mm -hmm. even more important to give them additional attention. I think. I'm, I'm probably thinking about it more from the perspective of as they get older. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Like, I, I can definitely see, like, he's like, hey, Dad, can we do this? And I'm like, you know, Isaac, I got to get a little work done now. Like, it, it, from that perspective, I 100% get it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that's just, that's something that is, that I'm very, like, nervous about. That, like, I want him to always feel like, uh that I'm I'm present for him because my parents were yeah. always very present for me yeah. and 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 I know like that was something that really benefited me growing up so I mm. always want to do that for Isaac as well
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah there, there's definitely a balance there that we're all trying to figure out. And I mean, even you know, with my oldest being almost almost five, or well, he turns five in November. Mm -hmm. um, nice. You know, I I look at I, I'm always trying to find ways to make sure that I'm I'm present enough with my kids and not just doing my own thing. Yeah. Because especially, you know, I get home at the end of a work day, you know, sometimes I, I just need to unwind a little bit. And mm -hmm. I mean, even though typically that starts by cooking dinner, because I do most of the cooking mm -hmm. um, for that, it's uh, it's important, especially with like my daughter, who's you know, 14 months old, to to make sure that I get plenty of attention because I only have, you know, like a a three hour window give or take between when i get home from work and when the kids go to bed yeah so yeah so it's it, it's definitely something you just have to find that balance and find what works for you and you may find as as your kids get older or you know depending on whether you just have one or multiple mm -hmm. kids that um that you have more time for doing your own thing and then yeah. there are other times where it's better to just you know be there for your kid yeah. Yep. So, how do you find time to game with with a wife and a son, and of course all your work? Uh, I will normally play at the end of the night. Uh, if I'm going to play again, I I really I don't have as much time to play as as I used to. It's really funny now. Like I think, how did I ever not have time to do things before I had a child? Like. Mm -hmm. What else? What else did I do? <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, I normally play at the end of the night. Sometimes, if Isaac is in the right mood, uh, he'll sit there with me and mm -hmm. like watch me play. Sometimes yeah. I'll give him. I like, yesterday I gave him a like a, a a Nintendo controller and let him like try to control it. You know, mm -hmm. while I was playing uh, on a PlayStation controller, yeah. and. Uh, you know, but sometimes he's not in the mood for that. But sometimes, you know, he'll he'll just kind of want to be exploring or playing with something. And as long as I'm like in the room, mm -hmm. uh, he's okay with it. But normally he lets me know, like, hey, I I, I want to be picked up or I, I want to play now. Uh, and uh, so you know, you just find little little spots throughout the day uh, to do that. But most of the time, it's after Isaac's gone to sleep and if Kelly's like you know, working on something or, or mm -hmm. whatever. I just, you know, I don't want it. I don't, I, I try not to let it cause it's not, it's like something I really enjoy, but it's not so important to me that it's worth getting in the way of, of other things. I just, I guess I just always think like, I'm not going to get to the end of my life and think, boy, I really wish I'd played more video games. You know what I mean? So like yeah. when I, when I am playing a game, I, I, I want it to, to be something that's like really interesting to me or that is making me think about something. Uh -huh. um, or I want to be very aware of like, okay, you know what? Right now I just want to play a game where I go online and I'm blowing things up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like I'm on a team and we're like going after the other team uh, and like be, be like intentional about I'm going to take half an hour here and just do that because it, that would feel good right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than like, you know, when you're younger, when I was like in my early twenties, right after we got married, where you know, me and the me and the fellas would just get on Halo Reach for like three or four hours a night, you know, and just that was what we did. Uh so Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I've found over the years that's been really nice is there are I mean, as as much as I try to make an effort to not be playing games all the time when the kids are up, um, there have been times where I do play with the kids up and like whenever possible, some, sometimes the kids will come sit with me and, and snuggle with me while while I'm playing. And it's just That's like fun. there's no better feeling than, yeah. than having, <laughs> having the cool. kids sit with you while, while you play. And there was one point where my oldest um, like I had I had been really making an effort to not not play games as much while the kids are up because I want to spend more time with them. Mm -hmm. And th there's one point when my oldest, he went over and he grabbed my controller and brought it to me because <laughs> he, because he wanted me to play so he could watch. <laughs> That's awesome. And so do, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Do, do your, uh, does your son, does he play anything um, with you? I haven't been able to really get him into anything yet. I don't think he quite has the confidence enough to try it. Okay. But I think I think what I probably need to do is rather than trying to start him with an NES, start him with an SNES. More just yeah. because even though it has more buttons, he loves Yoshi. 
okay, so yeah. so much and yeah. so if i if i put in uh yoshi's island you know just start that up yeah then he could he could try playing that and maybe he'd be a little more interested yeah that's cool what tips would you give to people who are struggling to find the time to game with other responsibilities of life especially kids Man, just like set yourself a schedule and just say, hey, from this time to this time, this is just my video game time. And, you know, don't don't feel bad about it. Don't don't feel, you know, just treat it like treat it like, uh, you know, it's it's a little it's a little self-care time. You know, it's like it's like a little bit of time where you can kind of just do your own thing. Enjoy something without, you know, feeling like. Oh, I, I should be doing other things. Well, if you've got a schedule, you know you've, you you are gonna do all your other things, and this is the this is the chunk of half hour an hour where you're gonna where you're gonna get to uh, play some video games. So that's what I would say. If you're really struggling with that, that's what I would do. All right. So obviously you're a fairly new parent, um, yes. and that's that's one thing that kind of separates you from my previous guests, where you know the the amount of time they've been parents has varied quite a bit. Yeah. All of them had been parents longer than me. Um, but with since since you have experienced the newborn stage fairly recently, and you, you've probably at least learned some things that you would want new parents to know, like brand new parents, people with their first kids, what would you say, from your perspective, are some things that people should know? Know about, like, what it's like to like have an, an infant... Uh, you know, just, just uh, basically more or less pro tips, things things that would help them um, as they're starting out uh, to to kind of make the initial experience yeah. less stressful um, and all that. I mean, if you're a dad, uh, just you know, help mom as much as you can because those first few weeks are hard. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're really hard on mom like physic physically just like the yeah the the act of like having a baby whether 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 it was you know uh, vaginally or, or or with c-section mm-hmm. uh either way uh it's it's very taxing on the body and it takes the yeah. body a, a while to, especially i guess with the c-section it takes they actually have to heal up uh yeah. cuts and stuff but um that's very taxing, but then it's also like you know it's emotionally tiring on on the mom too mm-hmm. because they've just gone through they've all these hormones have been released, but now they're like going to be sleep deprived. Um, so as much as you, can, you know, I know a lot of times it depends on what the, the the job situation is, but as much as you can be there for mom, be there for mom, um, and then you know just kind of know those first few. It's like it's the best because the first few weeks are the hardest, but it's mm-hmm. also like the time where you're like, "Holy cow, I have a baby now! This is amazing!" Right. So it's like you're still riding off of this adrenaline, and it, and it and it makes it okay. Whereas like if you were dealing with the stress, like ten, you know, like if I was dealing with that stress like ten months in now, it would be a lot more taxing probably. But yeah. for because it's a new thing and you know it's not going to last forever, mm-hmm. uh, it's okay. But probably the best piece of advice my dad told me he was like man just anytime it's like a hard time when you're having an infant just just think about like okay in two weeks from now it's going to be different like there's going to be some new thing going on and this part of it's going to be over so you don't you don't have to feel like it's going to last forever so that that was really good advice and then if there's any part of it that you feel stressed about just know that most of it ends up coming naturally and if it doesn't come naturally you you've got it in like two or three days like yeah you know it it's just it's not, you know, it's like it's exhausting, but it's not like difficult. It's just exhausting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things that we were told by a friend um, who had four, who was a mother of four and a nurse, she told us that one of the best things you can do is, as long as you have the option, put the baby in the next room from from day one because. Mm. I mean, now, if, if like, it's a, a big gap between rooms, then maybe not so much, but mm-hmm. if you can put the baby in the next room, that basically helps it so that if the baby wakes up, they don't smell their favorite restaurant. Oh, right. <laughs> that that was what she told us, and it helped so much. Like, it made such a huge difference compared to having, having our son sleep in the same room as us. Yeah. And, um, I mean, even with the second and third kids... 
I mean, it just, it made such a massive difference. And I still think that there's something where you have to be careful because there's always, you know, potential dangers, you know, related to SIDS and all of that, which no one really knows exactly what causes that. But, right. Um, you know, there, there's monitors and everything like that, too. Like, we have video monitors that we yeah. use, and that way we can just kind of see what's going on. And there there were times, I mean, even with my even with my daughter, you know, who's my third kid, um, I, you know, will go in, would go into her room in the middle of the night just to make sure she was breathing because, you know, yeah. paranoia and everything. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, that, that, that tip of having them in the other room really helped a lot. And, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody has to do what they have to do. And yeah. if you don't feel comfortable doing that, like, I totally understand. You know, you love your child. You don't want anything to happen to them. And if they're close by, you don't have to worry about that so, yeah. so much. But I think another piece of advice that was good that we got was just that, like everybody, like even to your point, that like everybody is going to have advice about mm -hmm. the best way to do things. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and but what might be the best way for them might not be the best way for you. And so you just got to like decide what works for you because it's not like there's a right or wrong way to do it. There's just, right. there are just ways to do it and you have to decide which way you're going to do it yeah and and definitely never never ask a bunch of people online for parenting advice oh, yes, because never, most likely if never. you do that you're going to end up with a whole bunch of different things especially yeah. if you're like telling them what you're doing you're going to have like 100 people telling you that you're wrong i i and, remember i put on the like yeah. hey well we're trying to figure out what to put on our baby registry any tips and facebook i got it's all these messages of people saying, hey, look, you know, I saw so-and-so me mentioning this thing, but you do, you do not want to get that product. It was just, I was like, I'm yeah. never doing this again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things where you just have to be really, really careful about the yeah. kind of advice you take. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I always try to make an effort when it comes to advice that I give to new parents. Um, just because I've, you know, I went through it three times in the last four and a half years. Yeah. Um, is that... You know, I always try to do things that are practical rather than saying, oh, you have to do this this specific way and mm -hmm. always say, you know, you you do what's best for your child and every kid is different. You're, you're going to have all sorts of different struggles depending on how your kid eats, well, how they right. burp, you know, how they go to the bathroom, you know, how often they wake up. There's just... You, you do what's best for your child and don't let people get you down if if you do things differently. Don't let people shame you if you decide to formula feed or breastfeeding or vice yeah. versa. Yeah. Um, yep. Because you, you what's important is that you take care of your child and you do yep. what's best for them. Now, I will say that I think people who try to uh, force their kids into being vegans from the time that they're babies <laughs> are are probably uh really nasty or well i should say at least when they're like really really little like when they start doing solid food what you know do whatever but mm -hmm. as long as your kid's getting the necessary nutrition they need mm -hmm. but anyway yeah. i'm not gonna rant too much about that <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna close out here, and I have one last well, one last question, and this is an extremely important question. This is the most important question of all. Okay, I'm ready. Do you tell dad jokes, and if so, what is your best one? Best dad jokes. I don't. I've I've made a joke or two since I was born, and people have said, "Oh, there's Josh with his dad jokes." I was like, "How dare you? That's actually a good joke." So <laughs> you know, I I think the beauty of the dad joke is that you're not aware that you're doing it it's just like mm -hmm. you naturally evolve so i couldn't yeah. even tell you what a dad joke is really um i couldn't think of one off the top of my head because to me they're not dad jokes they're just they would be great jokes but you know i guess this is just part of it what is your favorite dad joke do you have one on hand uh, I do, and um, <laughs> for 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 those who uh, will have listened to the previous episode, I, I use this one in the last one, but it's still my favorite. Okay, I'm ready. Time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it was one one of my Bible college profs used to use, and uh, I 
it's always been my favorite. <laughs> you have to like pause for a second and then Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I got it. <laughs> that's funny, that's a good one. <laughs> Alright, so do you have any final thoughts? Man, I'm just uh this is a fun idea for a podcast. I'm grateful that you uh, w- uh wanted to have me on. Thank you. I haven't uh, I haven't really uh been on a podcast in a while, I don't feel like, so it's been nice to get to chat with somebody. Yeah, and I've been wanting to talk to you about, you know, how everything's been going with Isaac just because you know, I I know for a while there you guys were having trouble and mm-hmm. we're, you know, we were praying for you that you'd be able to have a kid and Thanks, buddy. Now you do and I'm just I'm so glad because I know how much it changes your life yeah. and how great it is. <laughs> yeah. It's been really good, man. Like it's been it's been very fun and uh yeah, it's just it's like it's like such an immediate thing where you're like, wow, what was life before this? Like it's like it's just what it's just it's just very surreal. It's a very surreal thing. It's like it it seems like before you have a kid, you're like, what is that gonna be like? That's so crazy. And as soon as you have one, it's like I can't I cannot hardly remember what it was like before I had a kid. Mm-hmm. It's just it's really wild. Yeah, it really is. And like I, f- I feel like I'm like you know after you get married, like for for a, for a few years after, you can still remember. Oh yeah, I remember when we were dating and blah 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 blah. And then at a certain point, like now we're like ten years in, and it's like, boy, I don't even remember it. Like, do you remember when like we didn't live together? Like, do you remember that was so weird? Like, you hardly even remember it. But like with a kid, it's like. I already, like, I do not (laughs) remember what it was like not having a kid. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's it's so weird. And if you end up having more kids, I don't don't know if you guys will or not. Either way, you know, you have one, and that's great. But Mm -hmm. each time you have a new kid, you're like, I I can't imagine having a second kid (laughs) and what what they're going to be like. And then... Yeah. And then you have them for a while, and, and you're like, "Oh, and now I can't imagine not having that." Yeah, and that's that's same really thing goes with the third kid. I mean, and remember, remember, like, you know, remember like, when you thought it was hard having just one child, <laughs> right? And I mean, in some ways, it wasn't as hard with the second kid. Like the the newborn stage was definitely, in some ways, easier just because you it wasn't completely new. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, then you have you know. A different set of challenges depending on how how they are as a baby like my second kid he he was terrible about burping because he just wanted to eat all the time <laughs> and so we we'd give him we'd give him a little bit of formula and we'd take his bottle out so we could burp him and he would just scream yeah. and he'd arch his back and yeah. it was just like why are you taking away my food and then he would end up spewing because okay. he'd drink too much without burping and it was just, uh <laughs> Isaac was a Isaac was a pretty good burper. I just realized I wasn't talking to the microphone. Isaac was a pretty good burper, burper um, and even like like we don't burp him anymore. He just can burp on his yeah. own. It was it was yeah, all very course. like nice, easy transition. But there there are certain things that were hard with him that it's like wow that would be crazy if like this was not a thing that we had to think about. And then there are certain things that are easy with him. Where I'm like boy that like just hearing that story. It's like man that would have been tough. Like I n- I've never even had to think about that. Like that would have been hard. Yeah, it's just like I said, it's it's different with every kid. Every kid yeah. has their own quirks, and you just kind of have to figure out what they are. And um, you know, one thing I would say, this is just like a a small piece of advice, and this is yeah. just more based on experience that I've had, um, which may may not even be something that happens for you at all. Mm-hmm. Um, my oldest has had issues with his speech. He, I mean, he, he's always. He's always been very stubborn, and so like he'll he'll learn the things he wants to learn. And mm-hmm. speech was always something he was just not really that interested in. Hmm. Like he he would understand a lot of words. I mean, it made it vi- he made it very clear that he understood, but he just wasn't interested in learning how to talk very much. Yeah. yeah. And so, since we knew that some kids just start talking later, we kind of just did our best to let him develop on his own. And I think that that was kind of a mistake now um, because some people had suggested taking him to speech therapy and we had kind of just gotten the impression based on his personality and everything we had observed about him from the day he was born Right, (laughs) is that he's just so stubborn and he wants to do things in the order he wants to do some things he wants to learn sooner. But 
Um, if Isaac is ever at a point, like, you know, he's over a year old and he's not really saying much of any actual words, I would just suggest going ahead and getting him checked out because it may be absolutely nothing and it may be that he starts picking up words shortly after. Yeah. But, I mean, my son is um, almost four and a half years old and his two-year-old brother talks more than he does. Yeah. And part of it is their personalities, but... It's like he's he's been going through speech therapy and he's he's been able to get that help, uh, yeah. and it really has helped him immensely. He's he's making a lot of progress, but he's still behind for his age. And while it's not necessarily a bad thing in general for kids to be quote unquote behind because sure. every kid is different, they learn different things at different times. Speech is one of those things where it helps him, it helps you. If, if they can do it and so yeah Isaac is already like babbling uh -huh. and he will be he he says like mama and stuff uh -huh. but he doesn't yeah. uh, I, I'm not sure he knows like what he's saying but I think he knows that we say that a lot and so that's yeah. that's a so and he's even said dad da a few times yeah. but there was there was definitely one time recently where he was really upset. He thought we were keeping a bottle from him. We just oh kidding. yeah, I mean, and he and he let out like a ba ba da, like like he was yeah. letting us know that's what he wanted. So I think he's okay. Like he's, yeah, he's talking like okay. It. Um, but yeah, that's I mean that's definitely something we've we've talked about for sure. If that if yeah. it ever came to that, so I appreciate that uh, encouragement. Yeah, and. Yeah, I mean, from the sound of it, I mean, the fact that he's even verbalizing that way at his age, I'd say he's probably not going to have the issues my son had. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, my daughter is, is similar to that. I mean, she's only about, what, five months older than your son? Yeah, five months older. And uh, she's, uh, you know, she lately she's been picking up words left and right. And, yeah. I mean, it's not entirely clear, but it's... Both both my second and third kid are just way ahead That's at cool. this a at their at their ages compared to where my oldest has been and yeah. so it's That's cool. But yeah. Anyway, that that's just the one piece of advice I would give and that's just really if you ever come across a situation like that, don't don't yeah. wait like we did. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Th that's kind of that's kind of the tricky thing, man, is like it you notice things with your child um, early on and you're like, is, is, do we need to be concerned about this? Do we need to call in somebody about this? Do we need to go get them checked out for this? And you, you never know like what is being like overly cautious and like mm -hmm. what is like, oh, we're going to waste money on this. Yeah. Uh, and, and what is actually like, oh, are we going to regret that we didn't take look at this when he's a little bit older so yeah I, I totally get that man like i like when you when you said like yeah we thought it would be okay and now we're kind of realizing maybe it wasn't like i totally get that that hesitancy and like well you know we, you don't want to like force him like let him let him learn in his own time like i totally get that i don't think that you guys made a bad decision i think that you know sometimes you get it right sometimes you get it wrong you know right. what i mean like you're just doing the best you can well, anyway, now that we've kind of gotten way off, um, <laughs> do you have any more final thoughts before we close out? I man, I th I think if everybody goes and plays the witness, then my job, my, my work here is done. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, I'm probably gonna. I, I mean, I'll, I'll take a look and see how much it is right now, but I, I definitely will uh, keep that one in mind. Yeah, it goes on sale pretty regularly. I I would I wouldn't get it for full price if if it's not on sale. But uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Until next time, this has been The Frozen Gamer with Josh Taylor of Blimey Cow, and I will talk to you later. Take care.